Let me give my great grandmother. It's my great grandmother. She was 92, 93 when she died. Uh, 90, 1997. I had just thought to join the army. I was in Germany. Nobody told me she died. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna make this. I don't even. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll talk until I can't talk anymore. I'm a, uh, I guess you can consider me a Geechee. I'm from South Carolina, raised in South Carolina, born in Charleston, South Carolina. Grew up in a small town called Dorchester, South Carolina. It's about 30 miles, 35 miles away from downtown Charleston. Um, it's a lot, a lot of, Things going on lately as far as um, Kwame Brown. Um, as far as I know, Kwame was born in Charleston, and I think he grew up some parts of uh, Monk's Corner and uh, Georgia, if I believe. I'm not for sure. Um, you know, if you look right here, I mean, I got a scar right here. I got this scar in Iraq working as a defense contractor. One night, I was uh, working, it was real late at night, three o'clock in the morning. It was, so it was early in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, but we had, it was working night shift. Long story short, a piece of metal hit me right here. When it hit me, um, I, thought, I thought it was my eye, I thought it was my nose, you know, I got a pretty good sized nose. So. I thought something had been damaged, <laughs> bad, seriously bad, and um, and it knocked me out for a little while. But when I woke up, I looked in the mirror, my head started swelling up. I mean, it was it was really, it, I had a concussion, but I stayed there in Iraq. But it was when I got done and I looked at it, I said, "Oh my God, that's what was that?" And I, I kind of, I don't know, lately with with. With uh, Kwame, he's he's bringing up Third Eye Geechee, and you know every word has a vibration to it, and that that really resonates with me. I think it resonates with a lot of people, a lot of South Carolina, a lot of South Carolinian born African Americans, Georgia, North Carolina, uh, Florida. It's a lot of Geechees. Like my DNA, um, when I sent it off for uh, to see what my lineage was, it came back South Carolina born, you know, African American. I mean, like, how the hell do you know I'm from South Carolina? You know? So, there's a lot going on right now in the. Uh, in the ether, the universe, the, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, it's really something going on. Kwame is making, he's creating a huge, huge wave. Um, so my, and, and a lot of things are relating to me, so I know they relate to other people. Because, you know, I've had issues with, I won't say issues, I won't say issues because I'm not that type of person. But I've had encounters with um, some of the people like actual encounters with some of the people he's talking about or he's beefing with, you know. Um, uh, I've met Charlemagne three times and, um, you know, being from South Carolina, I, I met him through his cousin Kenta and Kenta's a good guy. You know, I don't know Charlemagne like that, but, you know, I was trying to get some help from him and uh, long story short, you know, I never got the help. I never got, I never really got any of them, you know. But the thing is, I kind of got his word that he would do some things for me. I'm a writer, so. Um, and I don't want that to come off as if, as if I'm, I got an issue with him because he didn't, you know, he didn't stand by his word. Um, 
I look at it like this. If you, if I say something, I'm going to try my best to stand by my word, but I'm not in that position. I'm not, I'm not so high up that, you know, I got people coming at me left and right. So I can't say, but I, you know, I guess I can say nowadays I, I stand by my word. Boyce Watkins, um, I had an encounter with him. <clears throat> and um, not not face to face, I never met him face to face, but I met him through a friend of his and uh, I was doing, I did some work for him. <laughs> I did some work for him and, and um, long story short, I have my suspicions about how he handled that. I don't know for sure, but I never got anywhere with him, you know. Um, now, the last one is the most like I said, the same people that he's had issues with. If I had had any encounters with these people, I've had some issues with these with these people as well. Uh, the last one is um, hip hop news uncensored. <laughs> you know, before the issue with that Kwame had with them, I was in the works of making a video to run a video. You know on their on their uh, platform the video excuse me the video is a picture anyways the, the video is oh, excuse me i gotta take this shit off i'm hot <sighs> the video was a video of uh a black Jesus with a third eye and the word Geechee on the side of it. And that was a that was a plan before I even before they had their issue. So it's almost and you know, of course I showed them the video, you know, I'm I'm willing to pay whatever. Um now I, I can't get an email back from them because of of course you know, the third eye Geechee thing, that's that's a uh, uh, a phrase Kwame has been saying for you know since since he started running his videos, and um, so I'm like, what in the hell is going on? What is going on? Like everybody, every wall that I run into, I won't say I have issues with these people or this this uh, platform, but they tend to I tend I. I reach out to them, or I see them in person, or whatever. I reach out, and there's a wall. I can't get past that wall. <laughs> you know? A wall goes up. With with Hip Hop Uncensored, the wall went up really, like, bizarre. I'm like, man, how is this even possible? This is like the first time I'm I'm trying to get my website advertised on a, on a platform. I'm willing to pay money. I'm a writer. I'm trying to, and all I'm I'm not a I'm not a one of these uh, documentary, uh, one of these uh, non-fictional writers. I'm a fictional writer. I'm I'm a novelist. I'm I've been doing this for twenty years. I'm also a Geechee with a third eye, with an actual third eye. <laughs> um, so I'm just finding it weird that. I keep running into these walls and I find it weird that Kwame Brown is kind of like some kind of a spiritual uh, protector or something. I don't know, but he's kicking ass and not taking any names. I mean, he's, he's kicking ass and he's talking some real shit. He's talking some real shit. He's talking some real South Carolina, Georgia, Geechee some shit that's how we talk that's how we that's how we operate you know we we're funny you know we, we, we have the jokes and the laugh with you and everything you know 20 years is a long fucking time that's a long fucking time that's 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 a long time shout out to Carcino too I've been watching you for a minute 
Carcina, you are one funny dude, man. I I love a dude who can just, you know, bring you some real information and, and be funny with it, you know. But yeah, that that was uh that and this happened today. The it this the thing with uh hip hop uncensored came to a head today because I was the video was done. I sent them the video. As soon as they saw the video, it was like <laughs> nothing. No, nothing else from them. No, no email back. No, nothing. Um, everything was going smooth until they saw the video. And the video is just a, a short clip of, um, you know, it's the black Jesus from Good Times. You know, um, I had somebody redraw that. So I, I don't have to worry about the rights and all that. Somebody redrew drew that picture. You can do that. You can redraw a picture. And I put a third eye on him. And, um, you know, and I have some background music playing with the word Geechee. And the person who is a local artist, a friend of mine, Sean R., Sean R., he's singing the song um, Hero in the background. It's one of his songs. And, um, and my website, writethisway.com. And it's spelled right, W-R-I-T-E-D-I-S-W-A-Y. Dot com. That was the video. That was the video. Everything was on go, green, until the issue with Kwame Brown and them. And so I'm like, I'm not gonna change the video because I already knew it was gonna be an issue. But this is, this has been this. It had been something that that, that was worked up in, in the uh, progress or in the process. Of being um, made into a video for like a week and um, I knew once Kwame was having an issue with them and I still I still uh, you know I was watching those guys for a while um, Hip Hop Uncensored Hip Hop News Uncensored I've been, I've been watching them for a while and I'm like these guys are pretty tight you know but the go along get along gang thing um, it's not it's never a group of people in a room talking amongst themselves, planning to be in a certain gang. It's just, like Kwame said, man, affiliation with people, you know. And so th I use that as a as a litmus test, I guess you can say. I said if, if, they, if they don't like the video, then I it wasn't meant to be, so I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, but there's something going on in the uh, ether right now with the Geechees. Uh, Kwame Brown seems to be the voice, but I, I know for a fact that others out, are out there. And if you're not born here in, in, the, in South Carolina is, I mean, if you, if you do your research, you'll, you'll, uh, you, you'll see where the, um, the Geechee's originated at. It's Charleston. Charleston, South Carolina. And I mean there's uh there's history behind it. Now I don't sound like a Geechee, but I can. I can. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can sound like a Geechee. You know. I understand them. They understand me. But all you gotta do is see me. You I mean, look at Kwame, look at me. Look at Charlemagne. Look at Charlemagne. That, and that's uh, that's an issue. Charlemagne know what he is. He know who he is. So I can't say, you know, that my my eye is itching. Um, I don't know Charlemagne like that. Like I said, I uh, his cousin Kenta, great guy, invited me to his home. That was the last time I saw Charlemagne, and um, I also I, I saw Charlemagne the first time he came to Charleston to uh, have a book signing. And th at this time, Craig Mack and I were um, well, I wouldn't say we were friends, but I had met Craig Mack a few times. He was in, he 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 was living in Walterboro, South Carolina, before he passed away. A while he was there. Well, he was there while, while when he died. And the last time I spoke to Craig Mack, well, let me, let me fall back a little bit. 
So the first time I met Charlemagne, I told him about Craig Mack, and I wanted to set up a meeting between him and Craig Mack, an interview. This is when Charlemagne wasn't that huge. That's when his book first came out. He wasn't. He was. He was growing, but he wasn't as big as he is now. And uh, if he sees this video, he'll he'll remember. Um, he'll remember the, the conversation about Craig Mack. It was a short, brief conversation. I just told him, you know, and he was so overwhelmed that day, uh, signing books and whatnot. He, I think it, it was his first time coming back home to sign to have a book sign, and that's the first time I met his cousin Kenta. Um, met him. I met his bodyguard Wax. Wax is mad cool. Um, but my opinion on the whole issue with Charlemagne bringing up Kwame's family on the radio, um, I think I think Kwame's absolutely right. I think he's absolutely right about. I mean. Even if you're not from the South, you know that you don't do things like that. You don't, come on, on national, radio, world, people across the world <laughs> is listening to this. This is not a conversation between, you know, so, and Charlemagne's very smart. He's very smart. I got to give him that. He's very smart. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's some, Charlemagne, he's a Geechee. He's a third eye Geechee. I mean, he. So he's very smart, and I don't, I'm not talking about book smart. I'm talking about intuition. I'm talking about just that natural ability to, to feel a lot of situation. A lot of us have that. My wife is from California, and when she first came to South Carolina, she didn't understand a lot of things. She didn't understand how people spoke. She didn't understand a lot of things. We, we go out in public. I'm like, we, we were at the mall one time. Christmas time, and there was a, a stabbing in the mall, Northwoods Mall, Northwoods Mall. And um, I see this crowd of people come running toward us. My wife don't even see it. So I push her up against the wall, and, you know, we go inside a store, and the whole crowd is just, it's like, I don't know, 50 people <laughs> running through the mall. Come to find out it was a stabbing. Somebody got stabbed, and the guy who had done the stabbing was in that crowd running. Uh, but she didn't see that coming. I saw that. I saw it. I was like five minutes, you know, seeing it five minutes into the future. I saw it happening. You know, that's, that's one thing about certain people, man. We, we have this intuition that, uh, you know, we know what's going on before you even open your mouth. That's the third eye Geechee, you know. Um, we're good people. The, the majority of us are good people. Now, but if you if you run into an evil Geechee, <laughs> you run into somebody who is not about anything and not really connected to anything, like Kwame says, you got a problem on your hands because uh, that you know the ancestors uh, are with us, and and it's. You got good ancestors and you got some non not so good ancestors, you know what I mean? So I'm not gonna make it that long. I just had to make a video because like I said, I've I've been writing for a while. I got three books, three novels published. One I'm working on now, and it's it'll be done here sometime this year. I don't I don't want to put a date on it. Whenever you start talking about when it's gonna be done, you all know, it's never done on that time. So I'm a self published author, so um I had to come over here because I just thought it was so weird that the same people call me is having issues with and I won't say I'm having issues with anybody, but you know I'm I've somehow been connected to those same people. So, I just thought that was weird. Um, I don't know if I'll get any views on this video, but I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. I'm I'm you know I've been I'm a working man, you know. So I don't I don't have time to I don't have leisure time. So, um, but I'll tell you my plan is very similar to Kwame's plan. You know, as far as helping the kids out, 
And the reason I say I'm a working man and all this, that I don't have time to really, um, I, I, when I'm not working, I'm writing. You know, if I'm not writing, I'm with my family. If I'm not with my family, I'm with my mom. My mom, she's, uh, she's mentally ill. And, um, you know, my brother, he, he takes care of her the majority of the time. My sister's helping a little bit now, but, um, you know, so my whole thing is I'm trying to get out of the working class. I'm not trying to be anybody's, you know, employee for too much longer. I'm trying to, I want to write for a living. And my stories are uplifting stories about poverty in the black community in, in, in South Carolina. Um, I'm on Amazon. I have my own website, like I said, writethisway.com. Um, and I'm trying to sell some books, 100%. You know, the more books I, I can sell, the more I can help, the more time I have to help. So that's that. That's my story in a nutshell. Um, I'm a United States Army veteran. Spent time in Bosnia. Um, I worked as a defense contractor for over 20 years. I've been to Iraq. Been been to Iraq several times, three times. Been to Afghanistan three times. Um, lived in Korea. Lived in Germany. Lived in Kuwait. Been all over. Oh my eye. My, my third eye, essentially, I tell you. Um, oh, boy. But, yeah, that's uh, that's how we Geechees get down. You know, Kwame, Kwame is, he's doing his thing, man. That's, that's, that's what he's supposed to do. I mean, what are you supposed to do after 20 years of not saying anything and all of a sudden, now you're, people are bringing you up you know, in that fashion, you know, making it seem as though you're not even a person or you, you're not even, you wasn't even a factor in a trade. That, that's crazy. And I don't know these guys, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. I don't know these guys, but I know, I know who you, I know what you're dealing with. And, and I don't, I don't advise you to, I just, I just advise you to keep falling back, man. Keep falling back because you don't, the worst thing you can do is get a Geechee mad and Kwame's mad. He's upset. He's upset. And I remember when Kwame got drafted. And it was almost immediate that they labeled him a bus. It was almost immediate. I, I remember. I'm like, and I was one of the ones that fell for it. I'm like, this guy's number one draft pick. Oh, man, he's just that. You know, well, come on, man. He's, you know, why, 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 why can't you play better? You know, that, I fell for it. Everybody fell for it. But now, listening to him, looking back on the situation, it's like, wait a minute. Did they ever give him a real shot? Did they ever really let him play? You know, because I remember when Kobe came to the league, Kobe, they they never even, you know, I remember him playing a couple minutes in the game, and Kobe was not, you know, God bless the dead, Kobe was not the Kobe Bryant he was two, three years later. He was he shoot the ball and he's a ball hog. He was doing some things that I was looking at Kobe like, what the what what is this? But they developed him. They developed him. They worked with him. They they were patient. They wasn't patient with Kwame at all. I don't I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And Jordan, one of the, I mean, probably my favorite player of all time. After watching uh, The Last Dance, after hearing from certain players, um, and after hearing from actual people, too, I've, I've heard from actual people who've met Jordan say that, you know, he wasn't the nicest guy, you know. And, and I, I can understand, you know, a um, guy having a, a bad game or, or not just feel like, not just being in the mood to sign autographs or even talk to people. I can understand that. But... Um, I've met a I've met a few celebrities in my time, and I've never had a celebrity um, just outright be nasty. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the first celebrity I ever met in my life, I was in the army. This was '97. Um, Rock M, my favorite MC of all time at the time, and he's still in the in the top my top five. Now, he's probably number two. <laughs> Nas is number one, but he's probably number two. You know. 
Um, so I met Rakim at the Lenox Mall in 1997 right after the 18th letter came out and this is some Geechee third eye stuff you know I was on the plane coming back from Bosnia with the source magazine with Rakim on the front cover so I'm reading the magazine looking at the cover look you know I'm, I'm anticipating oh, oh and I had the CD too the 18th letter so I got the I got the CD listening to the CD I'm CD not not you know <laughs> yeah this is back in the day and um, so I get to Atlanta on my way back to South Carolina and I said what am I gonna do I had a I had a, like a six hour delay or whatever this is Greyhound I'm using Greyhound um, I flew into Atlanta but I used Greyhound to get home because it's cheaper I was a like a private or something I don't know um, and so I, I get to the mall and I'm just walking around the mall, you know, raggedy clothes because I'm just I'm coming from Bosnia. You know, I was downrange, and um, I'm walking through the mall, just looking around like this is you know, because at the time the underground was supposed to be the mall, but the taxi driver told me no, it's not the underground, it's Lenox Mall. So I went to Lenox. I went to underground first, and I and, and it was true, it, you know, underground was not what I thought it was going to be. So. I went to Lenox, and I'm walking around, and uh, all of a sudden, I get by the lug store, and I see this big crowd of people at the lug store. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder what all those people are doing at the lug store. Lugs, for all you younger, younger kids, lugs are um, foot apparel, boots, kind of like a knockoff of Timberlands, but... I can't really explain lugs. You know, the older cats know what I'm talking about, lugs. Rakim had a deal with lugs at the time, so. And that'll tell you where I'm going with this. So I, it's, a, it's this big crowd of people walking around. I'm like, what, what? What's going on? So I get close to the crowd. I see all these girls. They're like screaming. And, and uh, so I I look. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is that Rakim? Is that the God MC? <laughs> And so, at the time, I'm like 20 years old. So I'm like, that's Rocky M. First famous person I ever met in, in person. My favorite rapper at the time. You know, I just, I was just reading the, the article. You know, I, was just, I, just, I got his Source magazine back at the, the Greyhound bus station in my locker right now. So I'm like, oh my God, this is Rocky M. So I follow the crowd around. I jump in the crowd, just follow the crowd around. And you know, after a while, I said, you know, how long am I going to follow this crowd around before I actually build up the nerve to go talk to this guy or say what's up? And um, finally, I got the nerve. I went, I went, he was signing the girl autograph. It's back in the day when they signed autographs. He signed an autograph for this girl, and after he signed the autograph, he turned and looked, and I was right there in his face. And he looked at me, and he looked, I remember, like yesterday, he looked me up and down. Rakim is a little shorter than me. I'm, I'm 5'10". Rakim is like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, or something like that. So he looked me up and down, and he said, I love you, man. And he put his arms up, and he gave me a hug. He embraced me. Well, it wasn't that type of. He, we gave he gave me that, <laughs> and then he embraced me like that, and that that just stayed with me. That that stayed with me. I mean, it's still with me to this day. I'm like that. And that's that's a different level. This guy had never met me in, in his life, and he just looked at me and said, "I love you," and and gave me dap and a hug. This guy don't know me. <laughs> How can you say you love me? And so that stayed with me for, I mean, it's still with me. Yeah, every time I think about it, rock him. So, and that's that was some Geechee Third Eye stuff. Me being on a plane, looking at his magazine, listening to his music, and then running into him in the mall. All in a matter of a day. You know? That's how, that's how Third Eye Geechee's 
get down. So to to everybody who's beefing with Kwame, I would say just fall back, man, because you're not going to win. Not only are you not going to win, you're probably going to destroy yourself in the process. You know. That's all I got to say. Um, if you guys want to check the video out of uh, the video I'm talking about, just hit me up. I'm, uh, I'll send it or post it or whatever. Y'all stay blessed.